I'm pleased to uh, speak a couple of minutes uh, and to bring a, a Northwestern Ontario perspective to this debate. This motion responds to some serious concerns that are being raised by Northerners who rely on their vehicles to get to and from work, to travel to medical appointments, and to pick up groceries and other essential activities. Northerners don't have the option of jumping on a bus or traveling by subway to perform these tasks. We have to rely on our vehicles, and in many ways, uh, in many cases, it's not even a matter of traveling down the road. In many cases, it's actually a matter of traveling 50, 100, or 200 kilometers, or even more, uh, which makes the use of our vehicles essential in our daily lives. So, as a result, the cost of auto insurance is one of the complaints that I hear the most about in Kenora Rainy River. I represent dozens and dozens of communities, municipalities, and First Nations, and I've heard the complaints from one end of the riding to the other. Just a few days ago, I received an email from a father in Kenora. He writes, My daughter, who is 20, just received her insurance policy renewal. It has gone up over 25% from last year. My broker advises that all insurance policies for individuals under 25 have increased. This increase was approved by the provincial government. Can you advise if this is true and what can be done about it? And you know, that's a very straightforward question. What can be done about it? And that's what we're here to discuss today. And it, it's a question, you know, it's, it's something that we're hearing, again, all across the north. Just last week I talked about uh, a young driver in Thunder Bay who's paying $4,000 annually for his premiums despite having a clean driving record. And it's very clear that we have to do something. We have to act. What we have is a service, auto insurance, which governments mandate is necessary to be able to drive, but nothing is being done to ensure that the rates that we're paying are fair. The last action that was taken on auto insurance in 2010 was when the province dramatically reduced accident benefits. At the time, the government stated that this action may result in lower prices for the consumer, but what we instead saw was that the rates continued to climb. What we also saw was the, was the auto insurance industry profits rise too. They climbed. In 2010, profits for the industry were right around $1 billion. The next year, after these changes took effect, insurance profits soared to $3.4 billion. It, the current system has obviously made the industry profitable. Now it's time to pass some of those benefits onto the consumer. And consumers are fed up. And we, as legislature, legislators and those who mandate that people must pay for this service, have an obligation to ensure that there is a balance between the consumer's ability to access this mandatory service at a fair and reasonable cost and the company's ability to cover its costs. The balance has tipped significantly to one side, and we're saying that we need to have a level playing field. In this House, we have spent a considerable amount of time discussing what we can do to create employment opportunities for young people. But what we neglected to consider is the fact that in many parts of the province, such as in the Northwest, young people need access to a vehicle just to get to work because they don't have the luxury of public transportation as an option. And that means that they need to have access to a vehicle, and along with that, they need to have access to affordable insurance rates. Most young people entering the workforce are lucky if they can find a job that pays $25,000 in my area of the province. But let's just say that they luck out and they find a job that pays $40,000. If they're paying $4,000 annually for auto insurance, as uh, the young man in, in Thunder Bay is, who I mentioned last week, that's 10% of their income that's gone. That's 10% that's gone before tax, before car payments, before groceries, before rent, before gas, before hydro. It's gone and there's no reason for it. And it's not just youth. It's families, it's seniors, it's even businesses that rely on vehicles to carry out their essential day-to-day -day activities. So whether it's getting groceries, going to the doctor, or going to work, people all across the Northwest are looking to this House, of members of all sides of this House, to take some concrete action on the issue. So by supporting this motion today, we can take the first step towards delivering this much-needed reduction, and I encourage all members on all sides of the House to do that. Thank, Thank you. you.